thank you and you know cookie less uh, future is what i think i've been reporting on for about 7 years now and finally we are here in the cookie less present so it's 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 good to finally talk about something that's going to impact us um right now and and not 7 years later hopefully un un unless there are uh, the phasing out is too slow so um like we all know google has rolled out this feature uh, to 1% of uh, chrome users to phase out third party cookies and in the second half of 2024 um all of us at least as consumers will be relieved that cookies are not tracking us everywhere not so much the advertisers though so um to discuss this you know we have a great panel um although the question is about marketers being prepared i know we don't have a marketer on the panel but i'll you know use all of you as representatives of uh, the marketers uh, and 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 get you to also uh, tell us what's going on with marketers so to to start with vishal if i can um, come to you first um while we talk of a cookie less present it's valuable to remember it's not all cookies it's only third party cookies and it's chrome i mean to different extents firefox and all other browsers are also taking uh, steps to make sure privacy of consumers um, is protected etc but this basically means that while third party cookies are out marketers have other options these are first party uh, data and they need to now start collecting this or at least use whatever they have collected so far so the question is in essence do marketers now need to have a publisher mindset of some sort um let me give you a little bit of a thousand feet view and then i'll probably come to your question more if you look at the way media spend you still have a bottom of the funnel which is really very really hard working and that's where it's going to impact when it comes to the less world we begin to for certain level of marketers which are very mature and which are into the dc space they do have their synonymous id as well as bii for them well life will go on because they've reached a certain maturity level or a maturity tech level i think some marketers probably who would not depend on the last mile and who really care because their business ran more on the distribution don't really bother who my customer is right now is now eventually going to be getting into it that's more like a bottom like a bottom funnel kind of thing you know and uh, what's happening is it's it's really not a hype of one p data you know it's a reality which is going to hit the market soon and there're going to be questions which probably may run in his mind thinking like what's the uh, composition demographic of my customers what is my customer going to reengage repurchase my product what is the drop off the point of my customer is my customer or is my audience uh, uh, really sticky enough with my product right is is he looking at increasing my lifetime value and these are like deep deep marketing questions that every marketer probably is going through today and is probably getting a sleepless nights now if he has his first party data available and if he is able to enrich is he able to sort of you know create custom was customized data or custom data i think he probably get inch towards certain answers what probably would be a dream come true right let's take a case in point maybe i'm just taking a d2c brand one of the d2c brands where you have a login you come to my website or app uh, i have your pii which is your phys physical name email id whatever I have a synonymized ID because I've dropped, uh, I've captured your device ID. I am able to really understand who you are, right? In the virtual world, in the physical world, what you're doing. And maybe when I start mapping that, that's where that's where the dream comes to. So I think it's it's real, and marketers are going to be investing more towards it. My sense is, look, not too many. There's a lot of education also that's required. So hopefully, we'll see a good day coming coming along. Paris, if I can come to you, um, you know, we still, you know, strangely, Vishal still says you know, there's so much awareness required, uh, but this conversation has been going on for so long. Uh, 
Google has been telling us that this is going to happen. Sure, they've given marketers time, agencies time, everybody in the ecosystem time to adapt to this, to prepare for this. Um, so how is the time that Google has given everybody to adapt because Chrome is what the market leader when it comes to browsers. So is the time not enough or what needs to be done and why aren't we at a, hey, we are ready for this kind of place? Um, good evening, everyone. So then it, it's a multi-dimensional question and multi-dimensional answer. Right? There is no one entity that's going to be left behind. Everyone needs to buck up to what's, what's coming our way and in a big way. Um, having said that, I'll probably take a step back, right, and say, hey, you know what? When I run my marketing campaign, digital marketing campaign, right, what percentage of my spends are going to a browser-based environment, right? Because we are talking about currently, at least at this moment, we are talking about third-party cookies going away, and not really device IDs, so say, uh, going away, right? So keeping that into consideration, my sense is uh, first about. At best, I would guess 20% of your digital marketing dollars will need to be reshuffled or will need a, a focused approach, right? Uh, that's on the overall point of view. Of course, this would vary basis uh, which vertical that you cater into. In case of VFSI, for example, the percentage would be much on the higher side, right? Because that's where the real conversion happens. Uh, but maybe for uh, for an e com it's app based, right? So the impact possibly could be considerably lower. Uh, so that's from the marketer point of view. Uh, from the publisher point of view, uh, again, if today I think, I don't know what percentage of people really consume uh, information content outside of an app environment, right? Only if it's a specific news that you've got as a forward and you probably can go to it and see, right? Uh, otherwise, I think most of the th stuff happens within the app environment, right? Uh, so from that aspect also, uh, while there will be a bit of a revenue loss for publishing, I don't think it's going to be that significant, uh, at least in the near future. Uh, but that's a good, it's an alarming sign today for everyone to be prepared for what's coming because today it's cooking, tomorrow it will be uh, individual device IDs at app level which will probably go away, right? So uh, I think what people are currently gathering is uh, which is the right way forward for their business, right? Uh, uh, and what is the what is the right mix of uh, various tools that I probably need to use, or various solutions that possibly are evolving as we speak that we need to use uh, for me to get the best possible result as a, as an alternative to cookie. And third part is what kind of data partnership that I can forge going forward, right? Uh, because look, everything said and done, there is a percentage of business that is still dependent on third party cookie, right? You whether you use it for for uh, market sizing for planning, for targeting, for uh, like Michelle mentioned, insights, right? Uh, so I think a, a great time and effort will need to be invested in data partnerships, uh, insights, analytics um, as, as an outcome. So what I see, the way I see it is that it's only going to accelerate some of these areas uh, going forward. But at this point, I think people are just taking a day at a time. Good. Rajiv, I want to come to you and um, while I was preparing for this, I was looking at some of the stuff you were putting out uh, in context of Cookie-less and uh, you know, on behalf of Rebit. So one thing you shared on LinkedIn was that um, there's a survey you conducted and then you said over 60% of marketers um, were working on building a 360 degree view of the customer, something that Paris also just alluded to. But this obviously cannot happen overnight. And in the second half of 2024, we are expecting a complete, um, you know, deprecation of uh, third-party cookies. So, what is the timeline we are looking at to truly be prepared? And when when does a brand know that either I have a good cri critical mass of data, or that the data I have gathered is now something I can use? You also need to process that data for it to be usable. So, if you can answer these questions answer is not uh, the same one for all kinds of clients because uh, there's unstructured and structured data. Uh, but the writing is on the wall for most clients. Uh, the writing is that today uh, data 
can be processed and turned into intelligent nuggets uh, you know, by using an AI layer on top. And you know, Microsoft is it with its Cocoa Pilot and all the enterprise AI players are pushing towards that future. <laughs> it's upon marketers and organizations as well to get their act together and organize this data in the best possible manner, harmonize it, connect it, unify it, so that when it's fed to any co-pilot, that co-pilot actually, you know, spits out intelligence and not garbage. Okay. Uh, now, the question that you pose is how much time? It really depends. Uh, you know, most companies have CRMs. So they do have a transactional record of the customer. What we are talking about is a digital footprint of the customer, which at your store, at your uh, at your digital asset, whatever that might be, a landing page, whatever, being married to his transactional footprint, all his behavioral nuances, what he clicked, what he scrolled, what he, uh, his dwell time, all being married to his transactional data and his ID, which is then further married to his PII, which is personally identifiable information. And all of this being with a string connected to which ad source he came from. Did he come from Google Performance Max campaign 4, 5, 6, 7? Or did he come from Facebook, right? Did he come from programmatic, right? Did he come from a CTV campaign? So that you can draw a straight line from ad to transact at a campaign level, at a brand level, at a business unit level, and all the way down at a profile level as well. Now that's the dream for a marketer. The challenge is that you need to pick it, right? And only then will you figure out how much time will you take because the complexities are not just technological. It's actually the bureaucratic complexities of approval from this person, approval from that person, a territorial nature of how we manage our companies internally, right? Uh, in general, the alignment of large company boards, uh, you know, marketing teams, the silos that exist, is just, that is a far bigger problem to getting a move on on this than the actual technological issue. I think that's beautifully put and hopefully um, that is where we'll see movement uh, soon because I think the technology is here and ready for it. Uh, Gaurav, my question to you, you know, Paris mentioned that 20% of um, ad spend basically is going to be affected by third party cookies uh, deprecation. Uh, my question to you is how is the experience of a consumer going to change from a brand's from a brand's side where it comes to retargeting or you know uh, just reaching out to the consumer because 20 percent of digital spends is a, is a large amount and a lot of consumers use social media all of that I mean wherever you go that red dress or red sneaker will follow you around and with that shifting what should also the consumer expect from a brand so <laughs> You know, the, the beauty of third-party cookies was that it allowed you to track one a user from one website to another. And uh, all of us have experienced, uh, you know, being retargeted. Like, you're, you're, you're looking up, a, say, a phone on an e-commerce website, and then you're probably checking your internet speed on speed test, and you see the exact same product there. So uh, that, that will definitely, you know, and it's, it's actually uh, one of the best performing uh, ad strategies also. So obviously there will be a dip uh, in performance and uh, the user experience will also get impacted. Uh, but then as Paras very rightly pointed out, right, that, uh, uh, you know, third party cookies, they, uh, they are relevant in the browser ecosystem. So you have other identifiers. So you have, uh, you know, device IDs uh, and then you have personal identifiers like mobile numbers, email IDs, which are, you know, in a very privacy compliant way. Uh, a lot of marketers are using them already, so uh, you will still see uh, uh, you will still see uh, that you know users are being targeted uh, with the relevant content. 
uh, or relevant ads. Uh, but uh, the most important thing, you know, as as time progresses for a marketeer, uh, would be to manage their first party data. You know, as Rajiv very rightly pointed out, uh, uh, you know, they have to start um, at the collection part right now. A lot of them are probably not collecting. Once you start collecting, you have to unify them, which is again a very important aspect of it. Uh, with cookies, uh, you know, uh, the programmatic advertising, which actually allowed you to identify a user and then target that user, uh, <coughs> the uh, you know the technology was a little complex. It required you to you know sync cookies and do all of those things. So uh, there were a handful of platforms that allowed you to do that. So. But now, uh, some of your existing technologies that you use, like even analytics for that matter, has a lot of capabilities. So you, you can start from there. Like, you know, you can start from Google Analytics, actually, GA4, where you are able to, you know, gather user data, you are able to segment it, you are able to, you know, analyze it, build AI models over it, build local likes over it. You can start from there. And then you can, you can start seeing, you know, what exactly, uh, you know, where your users are. Uh, and then accordingly, you bring them together. Once you have that in place, uh, then you can build these AI ML models on it and uh, find lookalikes in different ecosystems. So, you know, there are, as Paris said, there are second party systems that, that are available, partners that are available. You can have a DCR or you can find lookalikes in the existing ecosystems like, you know, Google or Meta uh, or some other partners that are there in the ecosystem. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you for mentioning DCR. So, um, Deepak, I want to come to you. Maybe first, if you can explain to our audience what data clean rooms are and for brands to build it, or will it be agencies that are, you know, creating data clean rooms? Where will these data clean rooms kind of reside and um, how can brands then um, use these? Okay, so I'm going to probably uh, just take a step back before I jump to the DCR narrative. So first things first, when you think about cookies, you know, just going back a little, dialing back to our chat, okay, uh, the good news is I feel that this is a blessing in disguise, first of all, okay, uh, uh, what did cookies do, you know, so you would say that how, what was internet to us before cookies really came into our life, okay, internet was a private world, people used to buy impressions, okay, and they used to hope that they're reaching out to relevant customers. You know, that was phase one for us when you talk about digital advertising. Phase two came in where you said, on the open web, I want to buy. I want to make my targeting better. And that's when cookies came into play. Okay, so cookies literally help you target consumers better. Fair? Now we are talking of a world where we are saying that, listen, cookies are disappearing. So the first part is we have to go back to the basics and we have to say that, oh, my problem statement is targeting. Fine, because it's all started with solving a problem around consumer targeting for brands. So what is the alternate way for us to target consumers on platforms like Meta, Google, DV360, okay, where I spend bulk of my money or when I go to publishers, okay. In that narrative, you would say that, oh, for the targeting world, there is already a massive identifier because you can leverage something which we call 2P data. Okay, now all this second party data is behind a deterministic identifier which is a hashed mobile number. It's consented data. Okay, uh, at least 50 to 90 brands work with us, many of them from Madison, Hive Minds, many of them, you know, at LogicServe. They are utilizing the 2P data, okay, to make their targeting better and none of them are even worried about cookies. I want to call this up very evolved, okay, so, so we are not, in my view, this, this narrative around the fear of cookies, okay, and the preparation to that, the market is already ahead on the curve in terms of adopting alternatives. They are already utilizing second party data at scale, okay, so that they can make their targeting better, yes, because that's an alternative to that, because you, you're basically saying targeting means better efficiency, fine. Now, when we are talking about there is also a mention about 1P data, okay, out there. So as an alternative to, uh, so cookie is like a FOMO effect right now. Okay, cookies are going. I have to figure out something. You know, so it's it's like a cat amongst the pigeons right now. Uh, unnecessary noise around that. Uh, 
but if you constructively go back to targeting as a problem, you can systematically solve it today. Okay. Uh, then comes the other aspect that in your strategy, 1P data is also important. Okay. Uh, because what is a counter strategy to, to the targeting world? You're basically saying that, listen, I should be able to lean on quality 2P data. I should also have 1P data and I have to revisit contextual advertising. These are my three anchor points because I have to go back and solve my targeting use case. And in the 1P data comes the narrative around data collection, building your 1P data. Uh, this 1P data conversation would be of zero value five years ago. Okay, but it is of significant value today because the time is right. Why? Because consumers are digitally connected with you. Uh, uh, you as a brand now have an opportunity to engage with a digitally matured consumer okay, and build a value exchange in the consumer journey that come spend time with us, come transact with us and hey, by the way, in that elegant journey, leave some information about yourself, which essentially is your 1P data. You're not in the business of collecting 1P data. You're in the business of engaging with consumers and giving them a, a great experience and in the process collecting the 1P data. And consumers in digital world today are doing that generously if the value exchange is very seamless. Okay, so 1P data is getting collected. It's important. And uh, uh, so that's where, you know, brands are eager because consumer is also eager to share that. Okay, it's a different, then you of course, not trying to complicate this conversation, but yes, there are brands in the CPG category where consumers don't see the need of giving them 1P data because they are not in the transaction journey. Right? But there are many categories out there, e-commerce, auto, uh, n number of categories where consumer feel, consumer organically is engaging with the platform, giving out that data, right? So those categories are going to probably flourish on both 1P plus 2P data because 2P data gives them massive scale, okay? And 1P data is something which they call the golden record, so they can cross-tab it. Yes, uh, what it, I also want to add one part that the good part is that the lazy marketer, which probably thought that, look, I'm relying on cookies and so on and so forth, it kind of has forced upon everyone, you know, to do the basic thing that I should have a data strategy. Okay, so everyone today is talking uh, agency, which was always talking, saying, hey, listen, you should have a data strategy to the brand. Okay, uh, but the fear of cookies going away has made life simpler and it's, it's kind of got democratize that everyone should have a data strategy, be it 2P, be it 1P, or in any other form. And then under that, you're basically saying, what are the driving technologies? Do I need a DCR? Okay, do I need a, a CDP platform? Okay, uh, do I need access to a data cloud to pull 2P intelligence? And then how do I use that for targeting, retargeting, or insights? Yeah, so those are all tech tools which are readily available. Okay, uh, but like I said, it has to finally tie down to your goals. Yeah. Got it. So, Vishal, uh, Deepak here says that agencies, the brands that are working with Madison and Hive Minds are not even worried about uh, the cookie deprecation. So, what are the kind of conversations you are having with marketers right now? Um, what are they actively seeking to do right now to address um, the cookie deprecation? But loves us, so he'll always talk good about me. And we love each other. We've started together in the same time. Anyway, queer, jokes apart. Look, I, as I said earlier, and I'm just reiterating, there will be a set of mature advertisers who understand and talk technology, or who understand the value of that data. And we're still in the phase of educating advertisers, saying that, well, you're spending X amount of money on media, but it's also imperative for you to really get into this space so that you're future ready. There is a large space, which is still a vacuum. I, mean, I don't think the entire CMOs in the country are, they probably be, what, less than five on 10 or even lesser. There is a lot more to learn. There's a lot more things to talk about. Deepak really summed it well. He, start, he started from 2000, what digital was, to what it is now, right? And, and in that whole journey, I think it's now moving towards a conversation saying that I need a DCR and I need a CDP. Tell me about even five years back, nobody knew what a data clean, 
Forget five years, two years back, nobody knew what a data clean room is. But now everyone's jumping towards it, trying to get there. But I think there's a lot more to do. I, I don't think at Madison, we are, I would say that uh, we are there with all our advertisers, but our conversations are always in that direction to make sure that our advertisers are mature enough to understand what we need to get into tomorrow. We have about five minutes left and from the rest of you, I would like to ask one question. Is if one year from now you had to have the same conversation, where would you hope we are at that point um, while we're still talking about creating awareness, educating, all of that. So in a year from now, um, are you going to be super optimistic that things would have changed drastically? What's your sense, given how we are right now? I'll take a stab first. Um, I would really hope that most marketers experiment and experiment and go all out, right? Not really worry about any failure. And the learnings from those experiments would really be the talking point next year when we So I think, in short, uh, the experiment, go all out. Um, don't go senseless, but have a uh, logical place and figure out what's your success metric that you're chasing. But don't be stuck to one partner, one platform, or, or one thing, right? There are options available. Try them out. See what's working best for you. So try and experiment and experiment cautiously. Yeah. Uh, before I look one year ahead, I'd, I'd like to uh, share two examples. Uh, I'm seeing two kinds of uh, marketers out there. One who are trying to, uh, you know, uh, you know, still live. Uh, I would probably say a little short sighted and trying to focus on the ROI of the day, and you know, this will take care of it, and you know, are trusting possibly the. Uh, various agencies or partners, they have to figure it out for them, right? Uh, uh, and in fact, I see the marketers who have the first party data at their back and call, uh, the, the telecoms, the BFSI, the retails, the autos of the world, taking it slow because they have, they're sitting on transactional customer data, e-commerce base. So they're like, okay, when this happens, then we will stitch all this together. And interestingly, and I cannot name but an FMC player, and trust me, nobody will be able to guess it as well, even if you try. Uh, you know, recently came to us and talked about a first party collection project for, uh, you know, 30 million users over three years and a budget for that, right? A media budget for 30 million first party data collection and strategy and insights for that. And so it clearly shows that the ones who are have nots. Uh, are preparing further, and of course, FMCDs have deep pockets, right? Uh, but they are thinking about data strategy very deeply. Uh, it is a publicly known fact across many uh, trade uh, news that Pepsi globally invests a huge amount of money over the last two to three years in building its first party data strategy. Pepsi possibly is probably the least. Uh, likely to get somebody to share data with them, right? But they have been having this strategy across the world, not just in India. So I should say. Now coming to uh, over the next year, I'd I'd hope to see that in a year's time, the effects of uh, cookie less would start happening. Uh, however little, you know, uh, it would first uh, the first players I see uh, that will start stitching their data from ad to transact. Uh, where they will have a CDP, a CDP connected to a data clean room for second party enrichment, uh, will be players for performance. Digital is a business channel, not an advertising channel. Those guys will act, get their act together really fast. Right? Uh, while the ones for whom digital is not a business channel, but more a brand and advertising channel, those guys are already starting work, but from a long term perspective. Like over three years, how do we build that war chest? of first party data so that we are not paying to our nose for digital advertising which any which way is on the upswing uh, when it comes to costs. Right. So you also mentioned an interesting number, you said 30 million user data. So is there also a good number for you know large advertisers so to think of as I mean it's give or take two to three percent of the uh, population of the country, right? right. Three crores out of you know hundred and forty crore population, whatever we have. Uh, it's, I mean, somebody told me that, you know, uh, 
India's consuming households are not greater than, I was reading it somewhere, not greater than 30 million households, right? The consuming class, the ones that actually drive most businesses, right? So, it's, I mean, yes, India is a massive country, but to actually get the kind of customer data that moves the needle for your business, you're not looking at 10 crores of data. You don't need 10% of the country, right? To get the kind of audiences that on which you can. Uh, so, uh, from that perspective, but still you need whatever data you have, you need it to be connected, harmonized and <coughs> available for activation in a way that doesn't make your life hell trying to do. Right? A lot of times data is available, but the right hand doesn't talk to the left hand and in many cases, one platform doesn't talk to another. Right? Uh, and there are different stakeholders for platforms within marketers to each other. So, yeah. you know, there's no handshake happening. Right? So those are actually bigger challenges to be very honest. Gaurav, Gaurav, if I can come to you, I know we are out of time, but I would, I would like you to chip in for sure. Sure. So, uh, you know, what this whole third party cookie deprecation has done is, uh, it has made everybody stand up and take notice of their data strategy. It's not as bad as it looks like. So, after what I expect after one year is uh, because you know it has uh, triggered uh, you know everyone to go stand up and take notice and review their data strategy. Uh, marketers should uh, should review their marketing data infrastructure. Uh, not necessarily invest you know without evaluating what they actually need, what their use cases are. You know, the biggest problem in the in the last decade has been, you know, where we are in the first or the second iteration of using marketing technologies. We, we, we sign up with things that we don't really need. So, you know, be careful, be, uh, uh, you know, be experimental as far as said. Uh, you know, conduct short experiments. Uh, and then probably after one year, you'll exactly know where you want to be. Maybe like, you know, as Rajiv said, you, you might not need anything because you might, you, your customer may not be sharing data for whatever they are, you know, interacting you with. Yeah. Deepak, so, I mean, you are surely not too hassled by uh, cookie deprecation and neither are the brands that are working for you, um, working with you. But still, do you expect any change or do, do you expect that brands will realize that Possibly cookie deprecation was not something that they needed to worry about too much, but to work with uh, companies like yours where there is two-party data, second-party data. So, largely, just to clarify here, like practically we are integrated with about 20 plus ad agencies. So our platform is in use, you know, for us, when people work with us, they work with us via agency partners. Okay, so when I talk, I'm talking on behalf of our agency partners and our ecosystem, we're using the platform with 2P intelligence and so on and so forth, right? So, uh, like I said, that um, for us, whether it is uh, a customer like Kotak 811 on one side, um, which would work with an agency called Sokrati, and they would leverage that to say that, oh, I am looking at getting digital signups. Or there is a customer of Hive Minds, which is a max life insurance would work with 2P data, okay, and drive outcomes on Meta to get that, yeah. Or whether there is a customer like Airtel which is using that with performance and driving that outcome. So I can go on and on and tell you that agency and brand which is actually making this happen, you know, with great outcomes, okay. Uh, uh, so we are seeing, we are already seeing a lot of active adoption, not just active adoption, I'm talking scale. You know, uh, I'm not talking small numbers out here. I would say that here is a customer who's doing 10,000 signups a month, scale numbers. Okay, so that's one. But if you ask me, uh, you know, uh, a year out, okay, um, see anything which happens as a trend has to reshuffle the the ecosystem. Okay, so my take on that reshuffling of that ecosystem is, now if you look back, you would say there is a creative agency and there is a media agency, and those those specialist people were solving those problems for the brand um, in the creative domain as well as in the media domain. And those are having their own complications because media is getting fragmented, storytelling is evolving. Now you put another block next to it, okay, which you call it the data block. Okay. Is there a block 
where you would say that, okay, this is a data agency or this is a specialization which I've built in my own setup. Because everything to do with data, right from collecting, cleansing, organizing, enriching, uh, and look, just collection, someone would say, I will collect 10 million users, 5 million users, but be aware that the consumer habits change. So what you've collected is going to become junk in six months' time. Got it. Yeah, it's like that. So don't, uh, uh, just don't go with the idea that I'll just collect. Mm. Because consumer habits change, preferences change, right? So the point is that I personally think that what Whilst there is great adoption, I think there is this space where all agencies today are building that leg inside in their own systems and saying that, and of course that is a, the challenge part of it is that data is about technology, data is about operations, data is about analytics, you know, and data is about having a stack, you know. So how do you do that? Either you do that organically or you strike specialized partners who can go ahead and curate that for you. I'm getting a signal that I need to wrap up. But thank you so much. I think um, we, we've understood uh, definitely, I mean, at least we have a direction for uh, marketers, what they need to do next. So thank you so much, Vishal Paras, Rajiv, Gaurav, and Deepak. Thank you. Uh, <laughs>